Let's talk about how to get rid of acne scars. Today we'll talk about a very common skin condition affecting hundreds of millions of people worldwide, acne scars. This condition negatively affects an individual psychologically and in how they are perceived by others. Given its major impact on society, how do we get rid of acne scars? Now we'll see what different methods may be useful. But first, what is acne and how do the scars appear? Acne is a skin condition that occurs when hair follicles under the skin become clogged. Scarring occurs mostly in patients with severe or very severe acne, but it can also occur in patients with mild acne. If you have deeper acne lesions, your body will attempt to repair them by forming new collagen fibers. These repairs usually aren't as smooth as the original ones, causing acne scarring. Tissue loss alone can also cause acne scarring. Contributing factors for scar development are inflammation of the pilosebaceous follicle, genetics, and then the acne location and duration. There are two basic types of scars, depending on whether they're there is a loss or gain of collagen, atrophic and hypertrophic scars. 80 to 90% of people with acne scars have atrophic scars, compared to a smaller number of people who have hypertrophic scars and keloids. Atrophic scars look like indentations and can be further divided into ice pick scars, which are narrow, deep, and sharp. The opening is typically wider than the deeper infundibulum, forming a V shape. Rolling scars, which are wider than four to five millimeters, they give a rolling appearance to the skin, or an M shape. And box scar scars, which are round to oval depressions with sharply demarcated vertical edges. They are similar to varicella scars, like a U shape with a wider base. Hypertrophic scars and keloids come with excess collagen and reduced collagenase activity. Hypertrophic scars are usually pink, raised, and firm. Keloids are reddish purple papules and nodules that go beyond the borders of the original wound. Both are more common in darker skin and they usually appear on the trunk. Depending on the type of scar, there are different methods for removal. Prevention is always best. Consider the following helpful tips. Don't pop the pimples. When you pop a pimple, you release all the oil, bacteria, and debris out of the pimple and onto your skin, leaving an open wound. Not only can this create more acne, it can also lead to scarring as it interferes with your skin's natural healing process. Wear sunscreen. Damage from the sun can darken spots and scars from acne. Stay moisturized. This helps your skin's healing process. Treat your breakouts. Products with ingredients like salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide can target the acne you currently have while also preventing future breakouts. For atrophic scars, there are several treatment options. The first is chemical peels. These are solutions applied to the face in order to remove dead skin cells and stimulate the growth of new cells, resulting in skin repair. Chemical peels used for this are salicylic acid, pyruvic acid, glycolic acid, Jesner's solution, resorcinol, phenol peel, trichloroacetic acid, or TC and lactic acid. The most commonly used peel is TCA because of its versatility. Depending on the concentration, it can act as a superficial, medium, or a deep peel. Lower concentrations are useful for atrophic box car scars or rolling scars, while the cross method using 100% TCA is useful for ice pick scars that are otherwise difficult to treat. One potential complication of chemical peels is post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which is more commonly seen in darker skin types. Another treatment is dermabrasion and microdermabrasion. Dermabrasion and microdermabrasion are facial rejuvenating techniques that mechanically ablate damaged skin, creating injury of the skin and resulting in improvement in the appearance of scars and wound healing. Dermabrasion is performed under some form of anesthesia, most often performed with portable handheld dermabraders with a diamond phrase that abrade the skin. Dermabrasion can be safely performed to the level of the superficial or the mid-reticular dermis. It can cause scarring and dispigmentation if the penetration is deeper than this. Patients with darker skin may experience permanent skin discoloration or blotchiness. There is often some small bleeding after. While dermabrasion completely removes the epidermis and penetrates the level of the dermis, resulting in the remodeling of the skin, microdermabrasion only removes the stratum corneum, the most superficial layer of the epidermis, provoking a faster natural process of exfoliation. Microdermabrasion is less successful at treating deeper and more serious scars. The next treatment is lasers. Lasers are suitable for patients with boxcar scars, superficial or deep, or rolling scars. There are two types of lasers for this. One, ablative lasers. They achieve the removal of damaged scar tissue through melting, evaporation, or vaporization. Carbon dioxide lasers and erbium YAG lasers are the most used ablative lasers for the treatment of acne scars. These abrade the surface and also help tighten the collagen fibers beneath. CO2 lasers promote wound healing and induce an amplified production of hyaluronic acid and skin cells. Success 
Success is mostly present in 50 to 80 percent of cases. Darker skin patients are exposed to a higher risk of hyperpigmentation. Known side effects include infections, redness, hyperpigmentation, scarring, which may be due to the overtreatment of the area. Number two are non-ablative lasers. They do not remove the tissue but stimulate new collagen formation and cause tightening of the skin resulting in the scar being elevated closer to the surface. The most commonly used non-ablative lasers are NDAG and diode lasers. They induce a controlled thermal injury to the dermis, stimulating the creation of collagen and remodeling of scarred skin. The advantage of this method is in its mild side effects, but it's important to note that it's not as effective as the use of ablative lasers. Number four for the treatment of atrophic scars is punch techniques. Using the technique of punch excision, the acne scar is surgically removed through the use of a surgical tool that matches the size of the scar. The remaining wound is closed with a stitch. Punch excision is an ideal technique for revising deep ice pick scars and narrow deep box scar scars, usually under three millimeters. Punch excision effectively turns an indented scar or hole into a flat linear scar. These flat linear scars can then be further improved with laser resurfacing and resulting in improvement of the scar's appearance. Number five is dermal grafting. A dermal graft is placed beneath the scar, stimulating the area to produce more collagen and tissue under the scar, thus giving it support and helping to lift it over time. The advantages of this method are that the graft is permanently beneath the scar tissue and skin and there are no allergic reactions. It's not ideal for large depressed scars. Number six, fat transplantation. Fat can be removed from one part of the body, processed, and injected in the area of the depressed scar. This can make the scar less atrophic and also the stem cells within the fat can improve the appearance of the surrounding skin. Number seven, collagen and hyaluronic acid as augmenting agents. Hyaluronic acid, which is what's in most of the fillers that are used today, can be used to fill fill the atrophic scars and improve their appearance. This requires regular maintenance about every nine months. Number eight, microneedling. This is done by micropuncturing the skin with small needles, inducing collagen production and a cascade of growth factors. This results in the thickening of the skin and more collagen and elastin fibers, which improves the appearance of scars. These procedures are often combined for optimal results. Now let's talk about hypertrophic scars and how they can be treated. First option is using silicone gels or silicone sheets. Silicone-based products are easy to use because they are quick drying and usually non-irritating, and they can be used throughout the whole year, even in the summer. They cause an increase in hydration and protect the scar. Silicone gel is typically applied twice daily for 8 to 12 weeks and can lead to a reduction in height, improved texture, and regulation of scar color. To find out the latest on our products and as they launch, please sign up for the mailing list at signup.feelconfident.com. Number two, steroid therapy. Intralesional injections of corticosteroids have been shown to be great for the reduction of hypertrophic scars because corticosteroids reduce the size, thickness, and texture of the scars. Meanwhile, they also can improve itching. The mechanism behind this is because of its anti-inflammatory vasoconstricting meaning decreasing the diameter of the blood vessels, and anti-mitotic properties, which means that it blocks the growth of scar cells. Steroids are thought to reduce the flow of oxygen and nutrients to the scar, which causes its shrinkage. Some of the known side effects are hypopigmentation and the potential for skin atrophy. Number three, cryotherapy. Cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen allows slowing of blood flow. One of the ways in which this can be done is by placing a needle through the scar tissue and delivering nitrogen to cause tissue freeze this process is followed by oxygen deprivation and death of the scar tissue. The best use of this is for newer and smaller scars. Hyperpigmentation, hypopigmentation, and skin atrophy are the main potential side effects. Number four, pulse dye laser. PDL or post dye laser blocks and decreases the proliferation of scar cells, resulting in decreased volume of hypertrophic scar and improvement of skin texture. It also improves the elasticity of the scar. The light energy of the laser is absorbed by hemoglobin, which produces heat and causes necrosis. This leads to low levels of oxygen, which causes production and remodeling of the collagen. The main adverse effects are purpura, which are purple colored spots, blisters, and loss of color of darker patches, especially in darker skinned individuals. Number five, surgery. Scar revision as a treatment achieves two aims, excision and narrowing of scars as done for widespread scars, and Z or W plasty designed 
to change the direction of the scar. Z-plasty is ideal in patients with hypertrophic scars, crossing joints, or wrinkle creases at a right angle because this technique brings the new scar within the relaxed skin tension lines, which ultimately improves healing. For the correction of facial scars, W-plasty can be optimal because this procedure causes a disruption of the scar that makes the lesion less conspicuous. It involves breaking up the scar margins into small triangular components, which are advanced and interdigitated without any rotation or transposition. Following scar excision, the flaps are advanced in a way that the tips of the flap on one side correspond exactly to the angles made at the base of the triangles on the opposite side, resulting in a W closure pattern. With this, we create a scar with better tissue quality that is less visible. But often, a simple elliptical excision of the scar is preferred to Z and W plasty with a reduced tension closure. The most important lesson here is to accept that acne scarring is very common and people shouldn't feel alone if they're experiencing it. It's always best to consult with a board certified physician when it comes to treating your acne scars. I would recommend starting with a dermatologist and maybe seeing a surgeon if the scars cannot be improved with non-surgical methods. Make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next video.